Good morning, everyone. This is Michael Miley here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for October 24th, 2022, around 11 a.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including hurricane troubles brewing in the Caribbean over the next couple of days and more tropical cyclones that could be forming closer towards the United States East Coast. So it's gone chumps and everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic today, we noticed that we have two systems worth monitoring. We have Invest Area 94L in the Atlantic now with a medium 40% chance of development and a new tropical system that could be forming over the next several days closer towards Invest 94L. And then a tropical wave that we will be monitoring that is currently several hundred miles to the east of the Windward Islands at this point moving westward. And this could also be the source of tropical cyclone formation in the Caribbean over the next several days. Looking at Invest Area 94L this morning, we noticed that the system has become better organized over the past 24 hours and deep convection has persisted over top of the circulation, which has actually allowed it to get a little bit tighter. We noticed that some of these wind barbs are starting to curl in, suggesting maybe the formative stages of a low level circulation. However, there still will be strong shear across this area, and as this moves northwestward, it will move into cooler waters. So development chances, well, only at 40% right now, could change a little bit, uh, but still not suspecting any significant development out of this system. If you look at the GFS evolution of these two particular systems in the subtropical Atlantic, we notice that some development, especially of this further south system, will be possible. It will be sitting in more favorable sea surface temperatures over the next several days, which could allow for some development. We notice that there's not really much development associated with 94L. However, this system, which could be designated 95L, definitely is worth monitoring. If you look here at the shear forecast overlaid with the 10 meter wind and MSLP off of the GFS forecast, we notice that the evolution will be mostly consisted of shear across the area. We notice that there really will not be much in the way of favorable upper level winds for quite some time. However, we notice that towards the end of the loop here, we start to get more favorable upper level winds aligning underneath what could be that southernmost system. And this might allow for some genesis of a tropical cyclone. However, as this starts to again move northward, it will be moving into a belt of shear that will be increasing as a cold front dives southward in the model forecast. And that will likely begin to kill our system off once again. You can see here it gets absorbed into a belt of shear and likely will not do much. So this is going to be kind of a complicated forecast. You notice the upper level winds will become gradually more favorable, allowing for some development, but then quickly shut its doors once again as that cold front slides south. However, of course, that is not the only system out there worth monitoring. This is the GFS evolution of a potential hurricane developing out there in the Eastern Caribbean over the next several days. Now, this is in the long range, so again, the model forecast will be a little bit off on the genesis and track and intensity, but we notice that the GFS does already have a pre-existing wave, and this is a little bit different from the spurious vorticity problem that the GFS is known to have. Usually, the GFS develops a system over South America. It carries some mesoscale convective you know, activity over there into the Caribbean and develops it into a hurricane. This actually is not the result of that. This is a result of the tropical wave we showed in the beginning of the clip, uh, you know, in the beginning segment here in the overview of the Atlantic. And that is what actually goes on to develop into a hurricane. And the conditions actually do seem pretty favorable for development out here. If we look at the wind shear forecast, once again, off of the GFS forecast for this Eastern Caribbean system, we notice that again, the wind shear is expected to be relatively light. In fact, there really is not expected to be a whole lot of shear. Now there will initially be some, we notice that tut that dives in there. There's kind of a secondary one right before the system moves into the Caribbean. But once this thing moves into the Eastern part of the Caribbean, there really is not going to be a lot of strong shear around preventing development. So this actually looks pretty ripe for substantial development once this thing gets in there, assuming it holds together now. Now, focusing our attention to the United States weather today, a few important things ongoing. First of all, we noticed the big weather system that is out across the central part of the U.S. This has actually been producing some severe weather, even a couple of tornado warnings this morning in portions of Texas, and temperatures are already quite warm out there. And across portions of the eastern U.S., temperatures are moderating quite nicely right now, warming up substantially, especially across portions of Florida. There are some changes coming up, so let's go and jump straight into that. 
Of course, today we've been talking about the severe weather across the plains, and in fact, we can see here on the overlay of the radar, MSLP, and instability. That there is actually some instability out there. However, we notice the showers and storms that are forming along and ahead of that line. This is actually going to lead to a reduction in the instability as those showers produce those cooler downdrafts and take out some of that cape. So these storms may actually weaken as they head eastward. However, if we actually look at an overlay of the zero to three kilometer shear across the area, we notice that it is actually quite high and that is what's been leading to some of these smaller scale mesovortices developing within the overall QLCS line. And this actually could lead to a few more embedded tornadoes or mesoscale supercells that end up developing, could put down a brief uh, tornado or two. Certainly not a strong one, but definitely could be one that could cause some damage, so be aware. So today, as noted, we do have a severe weather event across portions of the southern U.S., including places like Houston, Corpus Christi, all the way through Shiveryport, and down through portions of eastern Oklahoma and southwestern Arkansas. And that will continue to slide eastward as we progress throughout tonight into the day tomorrow. And for the day two convective outlook tomorrow, there is a slight risk for severe storms across portions of the south, including Mississippi and Alabama, all the way through portions of Louisiana. Certainly not a huge threat, but certainly you need to have ways to receive multiple warnings. Of course, there will be the threat for damaging winds, large hail, and yes, the threat for tornadoes. So with that being said, I do hope you have a greatest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali, and I'll be talking to you guys again some more tomorrow.